uh, where do you see uh, this all going? What what do you see in the future? Come well, on. let me talk a little bit about this whole Africa thing with Obama and George Sr. and George Jr. and Hillary. I mean, talk about a cast of characters traveling together. I don't see how that even flies, but uh, <laughs> apparently... <laughs> It does, and apparently they felt motivated to suddenly get up out of their armchairs and all travel together to Africa. I'm not buying it. I mean, this is, like, so wild. Now, I am I'm, I'm, I am rustling the, bu- the bushes, so to speak, of my sources to get the, the, the 411 on exactly what these people are doing. But one of the things they're saying is that they're over there taking their dinar and cashing it in to get real gold, and uh, and and I my my answer to that one is why are they going in person? I mean, please, they you know everyone knows they love to get money, but come on, they don't have to go in person to handle that shit. Um, that's <laughs> my take. They on rarely it. do. I mean, they could get them killed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, why wouldn't you send some flunky to handle your gold? I mean, you know, you, you know, they, they, you could pay them enough to get motivated. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. So. so so I don't buy that as being the reason. Then the next mm-hmm. thing is that we see that Obama wants to give Africa a billion dollars suddenly. And look, I'm all, all for that because I love Africa. I'm, I'm actually quite obsessed with Africa. But I can tell you that there is an, another side to that that has to do with an incoming race from Al Debaran, it appears, that is coming into Africa that um, I have – gotten information back channel about. Um, Now, there's no real proof except that what I've been told from various sources, those sources don't know each other and they are giving me the same story. So that's kind of interesting. But it is also interesting that apparently, and this somebody just made me aware of this because I didn't even remember it, but in my interview with Michael Prince, a.k.a. James Casbolt, he said that, that Marduk was here and that, that Enki and Enlil and the whole family supposedly is back here on the planet. And um, now there's been, they have been, you know, when they do these rituals at, um, at all the different places around the globe, they have been doing rituals to Marduk, to the New World Order, to uh, who he symbolizes and, and all of that. And apparently this this guy, um, my, Michael Prince, who talks about that in my interview as well, mm-hmm. um, and has talked about it as his alter, James Caswell, for years, um, he, he says that Tanzania happens to be one of Marduk's favorite places. Oh, now, really? That was just a throwaway in the interview, I think. And wow, I didn't even... that's a biggie. Well, wow, go ahead. <laughs> and so, no, and so this is like out of the blue, this guy says this, and now all of a sudden, who do we have in Tanzania? we got, <laughs> you know, Obama and Bush Sr., who never leaves his house, and, you know, Bush, you know, I mean, what what's going on here? It's what I'm saying is that it's just a little bit bizarre that that happens to be Marty to take some place. What are these people? If they have to go in person, you have to understand that this is paying their respects. Okay. Oh what- well, you keep that, and let's let's get back to this <laughs> trip to Tanzia. Listening to the Waterman Files, and this is Dr. John Waterman coming to you from atop a mountain and deep in the Ozarks, deep inside the castle, and uh, today is July the second. You know, this is bizarre. This is, you know, going to Africa, what was the security cost? I can't remember. It was millions of dollars to to uh, put bulletproof glass on the hotels they're going to have and all kinds of bizarre stuff. You know, Africa is a wonderful <laughs> place. A lot of people have been scared away. They have a whole publicity campaign to keep you away from Africa, but it it, it is misleading to some degree. Now, there is are areas where people are sort of at each other's throats, but there are also wonderful areas where you can go on safari for very little money and uh, and really, I don't know, just have a good time and, and get to know the people and, and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is something going on with Africa. I guess I have talked about it a bit. One of my whistleblowers tells me that there is uh, a race of beings, like I said, coming in from Aldebaran that is taking over Africa, that they're going to try to 
decimate the population and repopulate it with this race of beings. Um, one of my contacts in South Africa says that there's some anomalous thing going on with the immigration in South Africa, that, that there, are, there are people showing up out of nowhere that they cannot explain, that they don't know where they come from, and suddenly there, there you know, uh, are, are huge numbers in the immigration registers of them crossing the borders into South Africa. So something is up. With Africa. Oh, no in South out. Africa was that you're talking about? Specifically, that is that immigration mm-hmm. is about South Africa. But there well, are we, have a, we had a, a person come live from South Africa to the studios here, um, talking that when uh, he had word that when Mandela died, there was going to be some really bizarre stuff starting to happen. And well, uh, he went back and then contacted us later saying that his life was threatened when he got back from the States after he got on the radio and talked about this. We we got him on several stations here in the States talking about the well, problem. I, so. I can tell you, I mean, that information has come through to me. I mean, they are saying cer- certainly that that when Mandela dies that sort of all hell will break loose and that the that the black population will really go after the whites with a vengeance. Sounds like a cover, doesn't it? Yeah. And and this is actually what exactly what um the super soldier Michael Prince was talking about, which I, I basically said, You're out of your mind, this is so crazy. Um but he was talking about it for the US and I just don't think it's gonna fly in the US. But obviously they may try something like that in Africa, like to have a race war type thing. Oh, um, that's oh, what mm-hmm. you know, that's what they're really all about. They also, I'm being told that whites are leaving South Africa in droves, and that they're taking their investment with them. That they're closing the gold and silver mines, um, wow. the diamond mines. That that you know the investments are just leaving South Africa. Now, I don't know if that's true. Um, I know that I have friends, Michael Tellen. Well, the that, diamond mines are a Rothschild uh, controlled consortium, so. Right. I couldn't see that. I, I could see the farmers leaving, the white farmers and stuff, but Sure. Well, I'm I'm just telling you what, you know, one of the, the whistleblowers oh. said. Um now, you know, and and I have to say that there will be people that don't agree with that. Uh I can tell you that I have been there four times and that um that there is a lot of violence towards whites in in South Africa. Um and a lot of it never reaches the news. Um it it, it is a very dangerous place, but it's also an incredibly beautiful place, and the whites and blacks on the basis on the daily basis get along just great. Um, it's more you know uh, elements that are having issues and and there is I'm sure in the um, more sort of ghettoized area, there's a lot of anger still and and quite frankly, the people they should be angry at is the current administration who which is a a black um, sure. Uh, administration and they are apparently kind of bought off for all intents and purposes. They are bought off. And I know yeah. now that if I try to go back there, they'll try to kill me. So I have to be careful, I guess. Oh, well, I- I'll say it. they can kill me. Yes, they're bought off and corrupt. Very, very much so. Go ahead. So, so anyway, it is it is a conundrum uh, what they've been doing there, but. When countries t- like the U.S. try to give money to Africa, um, it's it may be you know sort of the velvet glove syndrome where they give mm-hmm. one and take with the other. Um, I don't think they just give. Uh, and the other thing is that I thought we were bankrupt. How can we give a billion dollars to Africa? I mean, I'm all for it. You know, if we really had the money, but from what I understand, uh, we don't have anything right over here. Interesting, yeah. Interesting. Uh, uh, well, kind of a interesting dilemma you present. You know, if we don't have money, how can we give it, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, what what's really going on here? Where are they getting a billion, a billion dollars? Where is Obama giving getting a billion? Well, our our, our fellow that wrote the book uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman can probably enlighten us on how they sure. enslave and that's through an operation that's going down, and I'm sure he would have a lot to say about. Uh, article that it's an article that's actually in the news right now, all about uh, Obama giving billions to Africa. Um, <laughs> so 
I mean, obviously he had to go and do something. He couldn't just go and, and, and say, hi, y'all, um, what's going on? Uh, he had to make some gesture. But the fact of the matter is, is that there are so many diabolical plans for Africa, and they are keeping people away. Um, and this includes Egypt, by the way. You know, Egypt is, is part of Africa, and when I went there right. in December of 2012, they had been very successful at keeping whites away from Egypt, trying to, to persuade them that, you know, the place was erupting and all these kinds of, you know, demonstrations and whatnot. And, at, you know, we had a fabulous time, and we, we had no problems whatsoever. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, this is the kind of thing that goes on. It's a propaganda um, Africa is an incredibly fertile land. Uh, they're, they're, the people are, are really magical, and um, it is undervalued, I guess you might say, in the world community. So it would be nice to get some notice, but not the wrong kind of notice. And unfortunately, that's probably what it's going to get. Um, I do know that the Chinese have built ghost, ghost cities in Angola. Uh, my understanding and what I've been told is that those are for the – this is how they phrased it. They, they said it was for the – the administrators of this incoming race, that once they decimate Africa, and the way they're going to do that, by the way, is by the war in the Middle East and depleted uranium floating down over Africa and further, you know, basically trying mm. to kill people. I mean, they tried with AIDS, uh, I guess, with, with some varied results. Um, they're always trying something. Uh, actually, I think it was Graham Greene who wrote, uh, and, and it was made into a movie, a fabulous book about sort of what the what the pharmaceutical companies do in Africa. Um, and let me just give a plug right here because uh, Jim Humble, it, there's a video on the front page of my website on my blog that I just linked. Uh, apparently, he he had showed a test to the Red Cross in Africa of all places that he his uh, MMS can, um, which is called Miracle Mineral Supplement, I don't know, he sort of changed the name or something recently, but it was called that, and I've used it, um, and it cures uh, malaria like nothing else, and uh, they saw it, it was demonstrated for them, and then they tried to deny that they ever saw it because they couldn't believe what they saw. Supposedly, um, basically, somebody came in and said, you can't let this man cure this stuff, we have to have these people dying. So um, that's what's going on, you know. So anyway, you should yeah, watch. Yeah, and, and AIDS had the same route. You know, there was a research group, a, a small three, four-man team of researchers in uh, a clinical research office in Chicago. And uh, I had been wor- researching uh, their work, and uh, they had a uh, lucite, which is a clear plastic that, that like, it's the plastic that carries the uh, the fiber the optics that carries the light on you know communications, but it was a big old thick one. You know, it was maybe as big around as your little finger. It kind of curved. There was two pieces that came into like a a, a fork, two pronged fork, and you lay it under your tongue. This this uh, fork, this lucite clear plastic fork. And they uh, emitted a UV uh, ultraviolet ray through this fiber, which, you know, basically just uh, clear plastic. And the reason why they did it there was if you look under your tongue, it's very, it has a lot of blood vessels right there on the surface. You can see them right there under the tongue. Uh, It's really loaded. Easy access for light to be able to get, deep enough into it to completely go through all of it. And so uh, they were able to do 40, I think it was 45 minute sessions. And after eight of them, uh, AIDS was gone and they were going to bring it to uh, bring it to Africa. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, Carrie, they disappeared and a very strange comic book store took over the place which had one name of somebody running that was connected to the original research clinic. And I go, how can these two things be connected? How's this person in the comic book business after all this research? And I couldn't find him. Now, I have the videos they did. I have the research public. I have all the evidence 
of everything they've done, but they're gone. These people are gone. So you're right. They are after them. Oh, yeah, sure. And we've done a couple interviews. Actually, Bill Ryan did a couple interviews with uh, Jim Humble, and we mm-hmm. used his product as well. Uh, now, it, it, it is pretty potent stuff, and I don't recommend it on some people go off, you know, off the deep end and use it on a daily basis. It, it can actually, um, I think it's so potent, it can destroy um, you know, some of your organs or whatever. So you have to be very, very careful with it and just use like one drop in eight ounces of water. Um, but it will get rid of anything, um, any kind of virus. And that goes for if you got shot up with something and you went through an airport, um, we had this thing that we caught in Russia, some kind of virus that we couldn't get rid of. Um, somebody sent us the, the MMS, and it was gone in like two days. It was incredible. Um, and so, there, yeah, it's it's pretty potent stuff. Um, look, I'm not a qualified uh, whatever I'm supposed to say. This, <laughs> you know, I don't know what I'm talking about, but, you know, like if you're interested, check it out. You bet. Those kind of things happen, folks. I, I was in my earlier days running around the plant with Frank and happened to be in a certain international airport outside this country. And somebody, it was a very crowded airport, and somebody stuck me with a needle. Uh, so all kinds of stuff can happen. You never know what's going to happen, by the way. In fact, talking about viruses, Carrie... If they force you to take, uh, you know, to be um, immunized, uh, MMS will basically clear that shit out of, out of your system. <laughs> Nothing else will. I mean, you know, that's potent. You, you, you know, John more than most in this regard. So I don't. I'm not. I'm preaching the choir here. But the well, I might that- say too that you know a lot of times there are things when I know they're real because they don't make national news. Um, Local news, maybe, but not national when they should be. You know, we've got the bird flu that erupted over in China, right? And uh, it supposedly was quailed down. uh, That's not a pun, but, you know, it was, you know, not uh, spreading supposedly. Well, it did. It went to one nation. And then, by the way, just to let you guys know, and this is my first time on the radio with it here uh, to carry is that they've killed 9,800 birds at a Tyson chicken plant in northwest Arkansas, which is the nation's uh, leading area for chicken farming, because there is H7N7 bird flu uh, going on, and they quarantined a 6.2 mile radius around this area and that's i mean this is the kind of serious quarantine where you get to a certain point and there are very vicious looking vehicles stopping you from going any further now i would have investigated it but when you get into a biological event like this folks uh you better be well equipped to de decontaminate have the right apparel uh so you know the best i could do is research it via local but we have a problem and uh, you know they've been kind of wondering when it was going to get here I think it's really important that people understand that China has canceled all contracts with Tyson chicken to provide them chicken Hong Kong has canceled Russia has canceled Mississippi has canceled the state of Georgia has canceled there's a whole list of them growing right now where Tyson is having trouble. Of course, in 10 minutes, uh, some other kind of deal could be cut. Who knows, you know. But it's erupted here in the United States, folks, and it's imperative that you be mindful that you have options. And I'm not a fan of, uh, well, that's pretty much how Carrie and I got to talking because in 2009, wasn't it, uh, they were getting ready to uh, start up their vaccination scheme, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, we were both on RG Sug Radio or somehow mm-hmm. maybe, I, I actually don't, I think you brought me over there when I left, uh, I think it was when I first sure. left. Sure. Yeah. Radio, you gave me that invitation. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I actually have a question for you because there is something going around about a 
one of those kind of uh, drills that's going to be happening in July. You must have heard about this, right? Um, and they're talking about this guy named Hawk, who, who I guess reports oh. in to, to Steve Quayle and, mm-hmm. uh, and talking about this DHS FEMA prepare for battle strength uh, exercise that they've got planned for July. And some people are sort of saying, you know, big warning, this is going to be a false flag, et cetera, et cetera. I, I'm just curious because we've kind of talked about how um, – Quail might be working both sides of the street, and um, <laughs> no, I'm not. Naming. You know, there is. Uh, you know, I haven't been public with what I know about Steve Quail, mm-hmm. but it's probably time that some people, that everybody that's listening and people that are going to hear this later, know what I know. Uh, uh, not all of it. I mean, I can't tell you about. If you want to see him turn pale, just mention the name Jeff Baker. Just mention the name Jeff Baker and watch him turn pale as white ghost. Now, um, and the well, reason I, why I can say that is because I was in the A studio, particular studio, when Steve Quayle was on the phone with him and there was a very important issue going on that he doesn't ever want to get public. But let me put it this way. When you constantly have carry black SUVs with federal intelligence agencies in your Montana home up in Montana, and Steve Quayle's constantly talking to him with the sheriff there. And and this is a regular event where feds are there. Do I have to say any more? I mean, I don't have them coming into my house like that. Oh. If they came to my house, they're not they weren't gonna be leaving me, you know, like they leave Steve Quayle. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, you know, I, I don't like to, to sort of target people, but the reason I brought this up is is okay. I'm curious about his source, Hawk, and what, what is being oh. said about this terror drill. Is just out of curiosity, have you heard anything back? I think I think I think his saw so, the sources for Hawk are probably I, he Hawk himself. I think is a genuine article. I really think he's really trying to do his best to bring information. Whether he's being played, I don't know. But let me just put it this way. There are truths about certain things, and then there are people being completely played, and they don't have a clue. And so this DHS person that writes for a paper in Canada, I think gets played pretty heavy. But that does not mean we don't we don't have a problem. Like take for example the Boy Scouts. Their venue changed from a very very well known venue at a at a military base where the boys have their national called uh, a meeting called a jamboree. It moved to a very remote location without any real potential of getting medical help in case some Boy Scout got hurt. And there's a lot of stuff going on that's you know, uh, orientation and stuff. I mean, there could be somebody lost and stuff. And at the same time, there is a drill planned for that area. So that concern is really vital and important and likely is a potential for launching (laughs) an event. And, And we're tired of it. You know, Carrie, more than likely, Whenever we're getting these big events anymore, you might as well count on it becoming live because Boston was the same thing, right? Oh yeah. I mean it. Yeah. So it it it, it goes without saying the mantra is the same, their MOS is the same. So I mean, how many times? I mean, the third time, shame on us, right? right? I mean, Bush doesn't know how to say that, but we do. We know. We know. You know, uh, shame on them the first time. But, you know, falling into the trap repeatedly is our fault. We need to be aware that this is real stuff, and they're really, you know, that it's a ploy to get us ready for their staging is ready for doing whatever they're going to do. Now, the guys, this is kind of complicated because you have real people that are really, Patriots, and I mean true, everyday, ordinary people that love their country, 
working these events. Now imagine that being the outer circle, and inside that circle is an agenda of a nefarious activity going to occur that the bigger circle has no clue is getting ready to happen. That's how these operate. Does that make sense, Carrie? Yeah, absolutely. But let me let me throw another thing at you here because I know I'm turning tables and you know <laughs> Go ahead. are kind of fighting over who, who gets to interview who. But uh, <laughs> what I say here is that um there is somebody just sent me notice that the Federal Reserve voted today ten to zero to officially adopt Basel three requirements in banking and that this is the beginning of the reboot of the financial system. It's mm-hmm. a press release just came out today, uh, and 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 so on, and and I'm going to be sending it around. But do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I do. There is an intended, very important uh, goal, and the ones that are really running the show are the ones that look, folks. We don't have to pay taxes for them to have money to operate the government. It's just not needed. They just print it from the Federal Reserve. Folks, I know firsthand money comes straight from the Fed to ops, to dark ops in the field. It doesn't go through any bank. They just put it in a bag and give it to you. That's how that works. It's it's real. And all these banks that you think are, you know, making loans and stuff, and and they're they're there in the surface. There's a horrendous amount of black ops money on this planet going to operations all over the place. Now, I on the surface, let's let's talk, let's relate this to Snowden, and, and then they'll you'll get the picture. Snowden's trying to find a place to get asylum. And as he's beginning to do this, the news is reporting, and alternative news too, that his venues for asylum are closing down. Now, on the surface, here's what we could say. Gosh, how come they're closing? In my opinion, Carrie, I think that what we're about ready to see is the launch of a world currency and central banking system. And basically, it's already there. Because they just go ahead and exchange, you know, two for one or whatever they want to call it, you know, uh, you know, depending on which currency it is. There are some countries that don't want to participate at all. For example, the BRICS countries have started their own central banking system. And by the way, they've been very busy trying to get Africa to participate, and they can't. Because of what you were saying, there's been a great deal of, of course, China is very involved in in Africa, and of course, they're part of the BRIC stuff, right? Yes. But still, there is going to be a global market cabal in charge on top of the whole pile here real soon. And uh, they know they haven't got very long to get that done. And no, it's not going to be called the Amero. Come on, just I mean that guy was a <laughs> that guy was a plant, okay? I mean it's crazy. The guy was a plant. The euro is not going to go away. The dollar is not going to go away. Where you really need to focus, folks, <clears throat> is in the central banks where they do their venue. Uh, I don't care if you call it World Bank, the IMF, the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England. I don't care what you want to call those central banks. Uh, They don't really care what you view the currency's name to be. They're in charge. And if you can't somewhere along the line hook up with them to get in and out of their currency exchange, you're, you're dead in the water as a country. Try doing it without you know, using dollars in America. I don't even care if it's cash. You can't do squat. By the way, George Green, I interviewed not too long ago, Kerry, he said that it's on the books to be on only ATM cards in six months. That's what he said. Yeah, well, that's probably true. That's probably true. I, I mean, it, it does look like we're heading very quickly to this 
sort of uh, financial system that they want to do this, what they call a, a, a reboot on the whole system. And what I hear also, I mean, for what it's worth, is that the global settlements and the dinar will be thrown in at that time so that they can have a distraction, so they can, you know, they're they're always going to do this game mm, where mm. the people will not get what they think they're going to get, and they will basically kind of change change the game up right when you think you're going to have a payday type of thing. Now, now, Carrie, a lot of people like to separate the geopolitical and economic from the exopolitic, and by exo, you know yep. what I mean. Yep. But you can't do that. Tell me your thoughts on that. I mean, I don't think you can do that. Tell me what your what your thoughts no, on that. No, I mean, Tanzania should be an example of that. Uh, what are we doing? We're we're mixing uh, so-called banking in Africa with uh, what paying our respects to Marduk. I mean, who knows what that's really about? But it's enough to hear about it from some ridiculous source uh, <laughs> to you know to make your sort of ears prick up and basically. Something is afoot here on the planet. Now, this is something that I'm also talking about, and I think that Bilderberg was part of this. And what it is is basically they are now in your face flaunt, flaunt, flaunting their, uh, their power. They are no longer, I mean, Michael Prince uh, came and, 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 you know, Max Spears coming on my Super Soldier uh, interview, they were sent there to say they work for the Fourth Reich. The Fourth Reich is now putting their calling card and their stamp on everything, and they don't care if you know. In other words, they're proud mm -hmm. of the Nazi, and it's a whole mm -hmm. different ballgame. So this is something they've done behind the scenes for ever, but now suddenly it's in your face, and that's the difference that I see. I see that they've been consolidating, 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 and suddenly – they think they're arrogant enough to think that they can now just put it in your face and you just have to take it. Um, the difference mm -hmm. is that consciousness is waking up in, you know, in exact parallel to what's going on with them. So as the dark sort of increases what they think is their power, the light does the same thing. And that's what's happening. And so well, they become more obvious. We become more enlightened, don't we? <laughs> so and 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 they can't keep the genie in the bottle, and we're the genie, uh, and that's what's going to become evident. That's so that's true. why they will resort to things like trying to kill you. Now you can't be killed as you become more and more your light body. And so when I go out speaking, I don't just talk about you know what's going on with the dark side, how they're thinking, how to start analyzing where they're coming from. But that's mm -hmm. important, okay. But it's also important to know what you have to fight them with. And what you have is your light body. What you have is your consciousness. And consciousness changes things just simply by becoming aware of them. And that joint consciousness, that um, source field, if you will, that, that gets put into place when we gather in places together in a peaceful manner, but we're unified in intent and purpose, that is powerful. Okay. Um, so, you're, do you think that this process of education is finally bringing the geopolitical and economic connections, of course, together? Now, I mean, when Eustace Mullins wrote the Federal Reserve, Secrets of the Federal Reserve, this very esoteric book now, uh, or back then, I should say, not now. It's almost a given that you can go into any kind of political, any astute political person, and understand they'll understand the Fed is a is a is a, is a problem. The Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, think maybe the next step is to connect that with a a very powerful off planet source of trouble? Well, I mean, what's your thoughts there? I mean, Are we making that connection? Is that what you're saying we're getting enlightened about? Is that it's this picture we're seeing here is a is a result of something more powerful that's not on this planet? What, what's your thoughts? Well, of course. Uh, you know, of course, I mean, leading the witness over here. No. <laughs> uh, 
you know, the fact of the matter is, is that we know more and more, and it's becoming revealed around the planet that this game here on planet Earth is, is a rigged game that the dark side has been sort of orchestrating things from behind the scenes. The puppet masters are off planet, all right? Mm-hmm. And some may have, been, may have just returned, all right? This is, this is feasible. Um, that doesn't mean that all the dark side gets along with each other either, which no, is no. an interesting conundrum that I'm sure they're having right now. Um, <laughs> I mean, well, it's know. like the Chicago mob bosses and yeah. the New York mob bosses have arrived in Africa. Now, that doesn't mean they're friendly. If they could yeah. knock each other off and take the other's turf, they'd do it, right? Yeah. So China makes their move. Then Obama and, and, and company comes in and makes their move. And, you know, <laughs> thank God for the color of his skin and all that kind of thing, even though he's, he's really pretty much white, as they say. Um you know, I mean, this is the kind of game going on. Um, it, it, it's a fascinating, fascinating game, but we're all part of it. You, you elected to be here. Um, so I, I think that, you know, you, it, it's like get, get in and get your hands dirty and, and join, the, join the team because you do, in, in the end, you're, you make a stand whether you know it or not. So you might as well make a stand for the light. Uh, unless you really do choose the dark and then that's your path and, you know, uh, you're going to experience everything that goes along with that for as long as it takes for you to kind of recognize where you're at. So, you know, this is the game that we're part of. Um, no doubt about it that, that they are tightening the noose, that they are going in and, uh, and, and doing all kinds of things behind our, back, behind our backs and in and, and our faces as well because – this is what I'm saying. I'm saying that they're changing it up, that Obama does these things. He, he takes away your rights right in front of your face. It's so <laughs> obvious. Yeah. Um, we sit yeah. here in America. I mean, I went overseas. I basically said to Bilderberg, you know, I know I live, you know, in, in a country that's run by the Fourth Reich, and the place burst out in, in, in applause, <laughs> you know, because they know that we do. <laughs> And they just they were just happy to hear an American come over there and just, you know, say a spade's a spade and, and not pretend to be something else. Now, this this latest uh situation where this woman comes I, I forget her name, who was talking about the NASA document and, and they're all ooing and eye over oh, yeah. Yeah. the agenda. Mm. And you know, Camel has been talking about this for seven years, okay? And this is not surprising stuff. They do have an agenda. They are going to plan to do away with you as best they can. They don't want you to live long. They are feeding you shit. Um, you're eating shit, you know. Um, but The GMO is a mess. That's very dangerous. You're right. Yeah, but we are spirit first. So that's where they can't win. And we are moving very quick, quickly uh, into 4D and beyond. That's what's happening here on planet Earth. And as people awaken, we move faster. And so, now, happens, so now your, your little agenda to, to move this, or I shouldn't say little agenda, but your, your, your agenda that you're wanting to move into then, uh, is this it where you're going to be going to maybe press the flesh more, get in the physical presence of the people more? Uh, include with that some music is is this uh kind of your your next step in this where you're bringing the fight to now well yeah About all the... it's, one, it's one uh one arena that we can definitely go go at it with mm-hmm. um what would you and, recommend and people do you you've got plenty of time i keep interrupting you i'm sorry go ahead okay <clears throat> no i uh, i just i just wanted to say that i i think that people have to just Decide where their talents lie, and mm-hmm. then sort of pick up the, the the baton and and run with it using your skills. You don't have to do what everyone don't do the same thing I do necessarily or what everyone else does, but do it your way. Um, let me let me tell you something else that I'm doing. Uh, I am okay. organizing right now a production that is going to take place where we are going to go investigate the signs of Atlantis in Malta. And, um, and there apparently 
what I've gotten is sort of a download, another sort of from the cosmos, whatever you want to say, a directive saying that it's time for us as a, as a people to go and look at what's in Malta, to start to try to understand this and what it means and what happened during the fall of Atlantis, what really happened. Because we're right on the verge of being in a similar situation right now. And so we need to understand that. Um, and, and so I'm going to be leading an expedition over there uh, along with uh, a, another woman and a whole group of very well-known speakers. I can't name them right now because uh, we, haven't got, you know, we haven't got this all signed, sealed, and delivered. But it's in the works. And we're taking remote viewers and psychics. And we're going to come uh, put them together with a renowned uh, ancient archaeologist specialist, you might say. Are you going to be bringing any, like, dowsers, any of that kind of people? Uh, or? It's possible. It's possible. We're going to be bringing people that will look into the records from all different angles. Oh, that okay. Just seeing what's on top of the ground, in other words. And then seeing what, what, what we can come across. Um, and we're also going to go to the... Oracle at Delphi, and we're going to be consulting mm -hmm. uh, in what's going on there as well on multiple levels. And that's really what the new, the new future of, of archaeology and investigation will be all about. It will be bringing psychics and remote viewers into the problem and then trying to discover what's really going on, the things that are hidden from us, our true history, and uh, so this is another thing that I'm working another on. Another thing like that, uh, very, very, uh, uh, I mean, Africa's got to have tons of that. You know, we haven't ever found yet. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, not only that, but the United States. Very interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, places highly overlooked in terms of our, our true history. Um, mm -hmm. I, I never forget that in Phoenix, Arizona, um, Richard Hoagland saying, you know, the, the sands that you see that, look like they're small hills as you drive on 10 out of Arizona, out of Phoenix. Um, th those are just sands covering what, what used to be uh, a, a, an outpost that looks a lot like Egypt. And uh, who knows what kind of amazing relics are down there under the ground um, in that area. Uh, apparently the flood waters covered it. Um, there, of course, a lot of people will know the stories about the Grand Canyon and, and the Egyptian relics found in the Grand Canyon. That they cover. Pipe <laughs> relics. Um, yeah. So we're, we're talking about all kinds of things in our history starting to crop up, and Atlantis is, is a big story. You and know, Carrie, that's a, that would be an exciting trip. I, I happen to be sitting as a undergrad student in the auditorium of the certain – university I was at. I don't like leaving too many trails that people can follow, so I'll just tell you it was a university, a state-run university. A very few times I ever went to a state university. And uh, not that there's anything wrong, I just liked, I preferred smaller schools. But anyway, I was sitting and this guy came and he says, uh, <clears throat> we're going to be looking into examining what's going on in the Bermuda Triangle, and you're going to be able to come on a boat. We're going to pay you, but you're going to be working. You have to sign a release. You may not come back. I mean, you know, it was, uh, and uh, I didn't know what it was all about. There was no books really contemporarily at that point written. And uh, I sat there and I go, I wish I'd have really done it now. Because the guy that was talking, his name was Charles Berlitz. <laughs> And, uh, you know, he's well known for his uh, book called The Bermuda Triangle and their work they did down there uh, trying to find some bizarre stuff. And their experiences were, you know, that weren't written about were pretty bizarre, too. But uh, I think that would be a very interesting. So is there a reason why you're going to this area for the Atlantis? Tell us about that. Well, like I say, uh, now this isn't set in stone, but what I have been getting, I, I've just been compelled. I'm, I'm being <clears throat> sent there, if you will. And so, uh, I, you know, it just has been coming to me through the past year or so, this sort of prompting to go to Malta and to go to the Oracle of Delphi. 
And initially I was going to take this really small team and then it grew and grew because people that hear about this uh, just get all excited. So there's something resonating in the, uh, in the zeitgeist, in the, in the mind of the hearts and minds of the people right now that, that they realize on a subconscious level that there's a reason to go, okay. um, that there's something to be discovered there that maybe hasn't been yet and a different way of looking at it perhaps. So, so, what I get is that there was a that it first of all that it wasn't what we know as uh, uh, the continent of Atlantis that it was an outpost, um, but that it was oh. a group of people on on Atlantis knew ahead of time uh, what was coming and that they secreted away some some information to Malta. Um, now I have no proof of this, but that's what the investigation is about in part. It's also just to find out more. So you can what's it, what's it uh, what's what is there at the Delphi? What what is there that, to look at? I don't know what there is. I mean, um, well, it be, uh, from, from or, what I understand, it's an uh, sort of an underground cave system, but mm-hmm. which is also in Malta, by the way. Um, so, but but it, it is a place with a history, and so when okay. you're going to these places, whether it be Egypt or or Malta or any of these places on the planet. There's a different way to approach them, and that, that has to do with uh, being an intuitive, being a psychic, being a remote viewer, and bringing what you you are getting to the table, and then working with archaeologists, um, people that are have open minds, like um, like certain people, uh, you know, because I, I want to be careful and not name any particular names. But let me just say, for example, when I went to uh, Adam's Calendar, that I I did a documentary in South Africa with uh, Michael Tellinger. Who oh, yeah. On his way. He's going to be here in the U.S. soon uh, doing a, another tour, a speaking tour. And he he's a, he's a lovely man, and he's been investigating the stone circles of South Africa, trying to get <laughs> to the root of what they're really all about. Um, going back to some of Sitchin's work, investigating at what's called Adam's Calendar, which is this amazing structure on the side of a cliff, um, absolutely stunning, stunning setting. I've been there like four times now. The incredible power in the, in those stones. It is it is equal to Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid. It's on the same. Um, what do they call that? Those longitude lines. I think they call them latitudes. Late, late latitudes. Where I mean the. Um, I think ley whatever. lines where they intersect. You mean? Uh, yeah, it's on the same line as as Egypt as Giza and and that goes mm-hmm. up. Stonehenge as well. So we're talking about an ancient site that has incredible power. Um, that is is very likely what I I see there as a time travel machine. That's what I call it. Um, mm. In other words, a portal into other dimensions. Well, bring your little paper and your charcoal and start getting ready to do rubbings. Maybe you'll see something <laughs> in the cave you'll want to actually, you know. Right, and you're you're a very good intuitive uh, psychic, anyway, John. So so you can relate. I think that would be exciting. I think it would be exciting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so we're yeah. going to put that together and and try to make a documentary at the same. But time. I'm I'm re- I'm retired, so I don't do any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> you're retired, huh? <laughs> well, what are you doing right now, anyway? <laughs> yeah, well, okay. What do you call this? Yeah, uh, that's not retiring. Yeah. Just can't, you're not never going to really be retired until you're dead and you know <laughs> in the ground, as they say. By the way, uh, how's your radio show going? What's uh, what's in the works or plans for it? Is it a status quo, a full steam ahead? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm okay. on radio, and uh, I do one show a week, which is on Fridays, uh, mm-hmm. assuming that I, I get a guest. I, Actually, this Friday I'm supposed to have Richard Allen Miller, but I I don't think he knows he's my guest. <laughs> uh oh. You know, I, but anyway, so I guess we'll have to track each other down. But he's a great guy and fascinating interview. Um, I did. Well, I, I certainly think you'll have a lot of fun in those kind of uh, uh, venues. They're easier to get into than these new buildings that are being built. I mean, you know, there's that one. Um, it looks like it's the second White House being built in the Ozarks. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, I can point to it 
If you know how to get on camouflage and keep from getting caught, you could probably get in there, but it's a bizarre place. <laughs> I can show it to you. I, bald, I mean, it's only 20 minutes from where I live. <laughs> well, I mean, I saw the Jesse Ventura episode that talked about all that. Um, oh, that that's great. nothing. Getting, you know, getting to the gates, nothing. I mean, I, well, I, anyway. Cool. Well, I mean, go ahead. Tell us all about it. No, I don't want to tell you about it. <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you go check it out, and you can tell them. Uh, well, anyway, so you've got this project coming for going to the. De- Do you have a time frame for that? For for the Malta project, uh, yeah, the Malta well, project. We're looking in the fall, uh, and I'm not sure. Okay. In, um, but sometime in the fall. Sure. I'm also trying to go back to Egypt. By the way, I did take a group, as I said, in 2012, December 2012. Um, I'd like to assemble another group. We're going to try to go to Petra this time. I'm trying to persuade Jordan Maxwell to join us. Uh, he, mm-hmm. he wants to go to Petra. He's, he tells me he does. Petra is an amazing place. I've been there before. Um, that is, that's got a lot of hidden history, and I think the powers of being use that place as well. There's a lot of off-limits areas to the public. They won't let you in. Um, you know anything about Petra? Petra is a, an amazing place. I do have some special information I can give you. Um, and, uh, yeah, Petra is amazing. I can tell you who ruled it anciently and, by the way, it is not from this planet. I got information on that. Okay. So I can get you a very – I can get you a rundown on a – on a. Uh, in fact, it's sitting over here on my bookcase, um, something uh, – don't know what the title is, but I can get it for you, and you'll want to you'll want to read that. It's uh, it's some more ancient history, not ancient ancient, but uh, you know we're talking thousands of years. So yeah, I can get you about Petra. Petra is an amazing place. Yeah, it yeah it really is, and 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 so uh, reason to go back there. Very interesting history there, and I've got a a really super guide that that took us around Egypt before and, um, you know, it was an unforgettable trip. So Mm -hmm. I I have a big love for the Middle East uh, and Africa. So uh, I, I like to go there if I can get away with it. And um, (laughs) well, you'll want to try going to the East coast of Greenland. I know this sounds crazy, (laughs) but there is a installation. installation. Yeah. Yeah. In, In Greenland. All right. I don't think you can get up there though. Well, you go to Greenland's east coast, and there is a very large research project going on under the ice as we speak. Yeah, well, Well, what more, do you know anything more about that? Because, yeah, I mean, I've I've heard about that big time. Century City. Start looking under Century City. Okay. Okay. Carrie, it's been, uh, we've got plenty of time. We've got you know, for 13, 14 minutes, maybe more like 11 or 12. You got anything else you'd like to share with us before you go? Um, let me see. I am working on, actually, next Wednesday, a Camelot Roundtable. It's oh. called um, Agenda for Takedown, and I'm going to have oh. a number of speakers on it. We're going to be talking about what is a really fascinating syndrome with, uh, with murdering presidents and uh, heads of countries as well as you know, things like, uh, you know, Aurora, Colorado and, and, and you know, mm-hmm. and Sandy Hook and all of this stuff. We're going to be putting all of that together from a more, I guess, stepping back and looking at it um, in, in terms of an overall agenda. And we're going to have some very interesting speakers. I don't have the final confirmations yet. I know that Ole Damagard, many people will know, he, he wrote a fascinating book. Um, which is on the front, it's on my website, advertised still to this day. Uh, I did a really great couple of uh, shows with him, and he is a a fabulous researcher from Sweden, I believe it is. And um, and so we're going to have him on it. Um, I've got John Carten, who is the guy in Canada who has been dealing with the water wars and other subjects up there. And, uh, you know, the queen and and all of this kind of background stuff. So he's got information about various politicians that have been killed in Canada over things. And 
we're, we're just going to be getting these people together to discuss all in one place the kinds that the fact that there are mm-hmm. some elements whenever they can there whenever they conduct a um, one of these operations they put in place yeah. just like they they know what they're going to do ahead of time and they set up their fall guys and and they go for it and and I have theories about okay let me just say this because we did sure. great subject um gary mckinnon uh bradley manning edward snowden we're looking at whistleblowers who what i'm i see is that they are been set up in other words they're legit um they had all the personality characteristics that would lead them to go down the roads they did but that at a certain point in the trajectory, in their interference with the powers that be, they started to be, allow them to go further and to watch them and then put, you know, sort of catch them in a snare. And, um, and, and mm. that's what is, is going down. In other words, it, they turn them into a patsy. And, um, well, there is it, a perp- I, It's a very, I think that's a very good point. We're not talking about people that are knowingly understanding what the outcome is going to be, but the people that were watching them had a very specific outcome planned, right? Right. They're th- going to take advantage mm-hmm. of, of of a leak, you know, and they're going to use it to their advantage. They're going to twist it around. Mm-hmm. So, that it, and and the same thing with Julian Assange, you know, and this is what happens. In other words, they take a personality. And then they use it, they twist it, and uh, well, now know, that I, could be anybody. Uh, now, I mean, what well, I see them doing is they're using it to psychologically pro- get us used to being profiled as the target. So we're really, uh, I think you're right onto something. That's a, it's going to be a very intriguing topic. I think you're right. Uh, so anyway, I've been trying to get an mm-hmm. interview with Julian Assange uh, now for, for quite some time. The movie that just came out, We Seal Secrets, is, is inaccurate, and WikiLeaks was pretty much up in arms. I, I linked it on my blog, to yes. They dedicated every part mm-hmm. of that, uh, that movie. However, there's a very interesting treatment of Bradley Manning and his relationship with the guy who... Uh, who squealed on him, so to speak, and uh, and that guy is a real mess today. He 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 is obviously a heavily conflicted, mind controlled individual. Who at this point, I think he he basically regrets what he's done, no matter what he tells the camera. Same with Snowden, though. Uh, the girlfriend's a mess. Uh, she's gone off off the radar. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a it's a mess. But I think you're right. I think you're right. You know, you're seeing them used. And then all of a sudden they had all these options at the surface now we're being told Snowden's options are narrowing down very rapidly. I mean, it's the world is looking at Putin like, what? You're not going to let him in? I mean, come on. That doesn't make sense with everything Putin's done. So I think that needs to be assessed, so to speak, and, and address why in the world that's happening. Or at well, least while we're being told. I have a question for you. I mean, you think that Putin is not letting him in Moscow in Russia? That's what's being reported. He's being quoted. Putin has been quoted as saying, we're not going to let him in if he continues to um, do things that harm America. Now, give me a break. Can we really, you know, that news report <laughs> is it balderash or what i mean where we were told that uh you know the outgoing president of iran said he wanted to wipe israel off the map he never said that right so you know what are we supposed to believe and i think you, what you've got planned is going to reveal a lot and uh, those are the kinds of uh, comments that need to be analyzed during that kind of discussion because that's ge- generally just counter espionage at work, right there. Oh it's, sure. That, that's that's what's going on. You must see. I mean, you've got to see this this stuff. The, you know, the sort of red flags all over the place. Oh. I mean, the bottom line is is that Snowden had had to have help first of all. Okay, you you have to acknowledge that, right? Of course. I mean, I, you just <laughs> don't walk. You don't walk in and get that kind of access. Yeah. 
but uh, but besides that, I mean. Oh, I'm, looky here! This was just laying on my table. Huh. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the janitor left it. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's bizarre stuff. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not credible. Go ahead. Well, I mean, this is the same thing that Gary McKinnon came across. There were no passwords on the on the NASA, com, you know, and uh, Pentagon computer network at the time that he broke in, so-called broke in. Well, you don't break in if there's no passwords, you know. It's all, <laughs> I mean, what is going on? And the on? equipment it's purportedly that he trap. uses. There's no way, yeah. Right. Isn't it a trap laid for... You know, a rabbit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So sure. I'm saying, what is really going on here? Let's stop and look at this thing. A now, that doesn't bit. mean they're not do-gooders. That's not the oh, point. That's the thing. That's the yeah. thing that people miss. They, they, see, they don't, they don't get the nuances. They tend to want to make all black or all white, and it's just not like that. No. no. So the individuals, the human uh. beings are playing. Oh, under I'll tell you, Carrie, <laughs> espionage is one. Isn't it? It's just so, it's so convoluted. You yes. know, it's, hey, you know it's, it's, <laughs> it's like the movie Dune. You remember the movie Children of Dune? Yes. Where he says plans within plans within plans. I mean, that's exactly what's going on. So. How about this? The TV show, I don't know if you've seen it, The Americans, right? Have, it's all have, about have, Russia, the Cold War. And, and and having Russian agents in the U.S. and what they go through. I mean, that's one of the best, apparently one of the best depictions of what, you know, true spies are really like and what their what their lives are like and, and so on. Especially then, so. Yes, and, and uh, you, you really never, you're not in control of anything. A lot of times you might think you are, but you're not in control of much. But, uh, well, Carrie, it's been a pleasure. We could have probably talked a little bit, <laughs> a lot more here. Well, thank good to you. hear you. Sure. Glad to know you uh, had a good experience over there in uh, Bilderberg territory, and better yet, the real people of uh, of uh, that uh, world are are waking mm -hmm. up and wanting to get something done. And I'd love to see a Woodstock of that of that ilk here in America. That'd be great. I yeah. can just see it now. Absolutely. Well, folks, thanks a lot, Carrie. Anything else? Um, no, thank you for uh, having me on your show, and I, I appreciate it. And let's see what happens with, with all of these things that we've been touching on because these are ongoing stories. Well, we're riding the waves a little bit ahead of things. That's why we're not on Skype anymore and you don't see me. And uh, I recommend to everybody to get uh, Silent Circle. By the way, it's still a good buy, and you can get it for hundred twenty dollars a year, and you get a whole suite of activity. And it's the good boys. They don't want you to think they're the good guys, but they are. And uh, so, anyway, uh, call anytime. Any uh, any other uh, contact information you'd like to get out for anybody that'd like to to get a hold of you, Carrie? How do they get a hold of you? Um, go to projectcamelotportal.com or call, write to me at Carrie at projectcamelot.tv. Uh, and okay. basically, my first name is spelled K E R R Y. And visit my blog because that's where all the action is. And you want to stay tuned on where there, where I am. If I'm still alive, that's where you go. Front page of Camelot to my blog. Sounds good, Carrie. Thanks for being here, folks. It's been our pleasure to be with you again here at the uh, Waterman Files. And uh, we're getting more people all the time. We're getting more attacks all the time, too. And it's really funny as we block them, carry, they come from a different direction, entirely different part of the world every time we do that. But uh, we're getting there. Thanks a lot. Goodbye, folks. Goodbye, Kerry.